Hello. Hey there. Nice to meet you. Did you find your way here okay? Okay, cool. You followed the instructions. Yes, very good. My name is Emma and I'm gonna try to make this intro super short because today we're gonna do a bookshelf tour. So I'm going to be moving very, very soon. And so I wanted to get kind of one last screenshot and one last glimpse of my bookshelves before I have to take over 500 volumes, over 500 works off of these shelves, plop them into boxes and then move them. I just wanted to take you guys around my space today. I think I'm gonna show you hopefully every single book on my shelves, which uh, we might be here for a while. So please get comfortable, cuddle up with your dog, your cat, your fish, whatever you got. Tamagotchis. I'll put timestamps below and stuff like that because I wanted to take you along just kind of on like the decor as well because I have this bookshelf that's kind of flipped on its side and then of course I'll take you through these huge bookshelves row by row and well you know we'll talk about how they're arranged and everything like that but yeah this is like my happiest place I've like built my little cave of books it's where I always want to be I never want to leave I feel like I'm on vogue right now that's what they should do. Vogue should do a series exploring people's bookshelves. I think that would be great. All right, so yeah, let's just get started. I'm excited. Do you guys want the light on or off? What are we feeling? I think I kind of like it off. It creates like a nice warm and cozy and this is how I usually have it. So um, I think that works best. Okay, so this is kind of how you come into the little book nook, right? So I've kind of created a line with my desk there and then my desk just faces like the outside window. And then we have this whole little cube for books and reading, which I really love. So I think we're gonna start with this brown bookshelf that I flipped over on its side, just because that's easiest. It has a bunch of stuff from you guys on it that I love, some of it you've made, which is so impressive. And it has some books on the bottom there, which we can just start with. All right, so here she is. I ignore, okay, ignore the fire hazard wires, but I have no idea where this bookshelf actually is from. I got it secondhand from a family friend, so I really don't know. I don't know, but there's a little overview. Yeah, okay, so for the light, I think we're gonna do like half and half because it's also a gloomy day, so you get to see like both, but generally I don't like having this big lamp on because it's too just like bright light and it reminds me of like a classroom. Um, so I usually like having it just warmer tones and stuff like that. But anyway, so this bookshelf uh, has my manga, has a few collections, and then at the end it has some textbooks and uni notes for uni because I am in literature. Surprise, surprise. Okay, so this is the top section. I think we're gonna start over there. So at the end here, we have a whole bunch of stuff on top. So this one is actually a print from one of you guys. If any of you have Etsy shops or um, if there's links to anything, I will of course leave them in the description box. But this is from one of you guys who have a really beautiful Etsy shop. I have a few of your prints and bookmarks as well. Um, so that was such a lovely gift and I just put it in this brown frame and then it sits on top. And then randomly here, I just have my sunglasses just because um, I just wanna like, you know, have them to, to just quickly grab and my watch that I wear all the time is just here and then I randomly have three little tea light candles too and then right here open right now um, just because I love looking at it this is a manuscript copy of Frankenstein yeah I wanted to just have it open for a little bit I don't know if that's super great for the spine but it should be okay so this is literally Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. This is from the uh, publisher SP Books. They're based in France. And yeah, wow. Just to like look at this every day is honestly, it's fascinating, it's inspiring. It just fills me with awe. Like every time I look at it and like seeing her words and her handwriting and stuff like that. So yeah, I just wanted to display it pretty prominently. And then over here, we definitely have this little crooked <laughs> frame. I got this from my grandma, I think. Um, and then we have a print of Howl and Sophie from Howl's Moving Castle. Um, I found this one on Redbubble, so it's pretty easy to find. This is actually just a postcard and then I just put it in the, in the frame. So yeah, I really love um, Studio Ghibli, which we'll see in a 
second. And then right here, I have this really funky lamp that I found at an antique store. Someone said that it looks like a wasp's nest. <laughs> and I do agree, but like, I'm not mad about it. And then like, it has this cool little opening and yeah, I don't know. I just really love it. It's like some weird alien creature, but next to it, I just have a couple little like rocks and crystal. I have an amethyst. I believe this is from a friend. And then this one I got at a shop in, I think, Stratford when I was really, really little. Um, and I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. Um, so yeah, they just sit there because they look nice. Right here is one of the oldest plants I've had. His name is Magnus. He's like over three years old. So he just sits here. I honestly don't know how he's still alive. Um, but he is. This little portion of my bookshelf is a whole bunch of knickknacks and also gifts and really wonderful things. So we'll start with, I guess, this book. This is a nonfiction, like, compendium of books you should read before you die. So it's just, like, a whole bunch of really beautiful books that the author thinks you should read and it comes with illustrations and stuff, which is gorgeous. And I just, yeah, I just really love the cover. Oh, beautiful. And then right here, um, this was also a gift. These are a couple of coins. I feel so bad every time I touch them. Yeah, so these are from France and England, and they are from, I think this one's from like the 1910s. And this one is from 1890. Like, wow. I'm just literally in awe every time I look at these, like thinking where they've been and stuff. So um, yeah, I also love staring at those. <laughs> And then here, these are all gifts from you guys. This is one of your artwork, wow. So yeah, this artwork is one of your guys as well. Of course, it is of the castle in Howl's Moving Castle. Like this is just so impressive to me. And then I just put it in this little frame again, but this is gorgeous. And then these are a couple of stickers from Totoro. So we just have Totoro and the cat bus, but um, yeah, I love them. I don't want to stick them anywhere. I just want to like, you know, keep them forever. Here we have a very used pumpkin pie candle and then we have a little calcifer pin. Look at him. What a cutie. And then right here, I just keep a couple of journals and note pad kind of thing. Just a little bit of journaling and stuff like that. We have a tea lamp. We have a gorgeous singing bowl. And then right here on top of it is a stack of books that is on my TBR for super soon. So we have Season of Migration to the North. This one, this little one is Sonnets from the Portuguese by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Um, this one is The Book of Images by Rilke and then a gear with Rilke, such as Rilke quotes and stuff. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear any noise throughout this whole video. Um, my apartment has been doing construction for like five consecutive months. So yeah, I'm so happy to be moving. That's besides the point, but um, yeah, so I'll just keep these here because I want to read them soon, uh, hopefully this month, and I just want to let you know which ones they are because, of course, they'll be missing from my bookshelves. So right here in this little cubby, my Norton textbooks just fit so wonderfully. These are all for uni. Um, so we have science fiction, American literature, um, the major authors, a bigger version of the major authors, and renaissance literature over here. So that's what basically stays in there. I just like having them kind of nearby and stuff. And then over here are more textbooks. So we have modern theory and criticism, a history of theory and criticism. Um, this is a textbook all about the English language and stuff like that. And then all of these are my uni notebooks. Um, I don't think most of them are full. And like, it is really helpful as an English student to just keep everything you've ever done as well. So um, yeah, these are all just for various classes. Some of them are languages. Like I know we have ancient Greek and Latin in here. And then these are just miscellaneous English courses and lecture notes. And then we have <laughs> Wheelock's Latin way back there because he didn't fit anywhere else. So in this middle compartment, I just keep my microphone for my videos. And then this is a cute little um, stamp set basically. So it comes with a whole bunch of different wax melts and then like, you know, the stampy wax things. Here we have a couple things, a couple pieces of kind of artwork stuff from ancient Egypt and then a couple tea lights. This is actually a replica of King Tut's um, throne that I found at Valley Village randomly, the thrift store, but it's just actually really gorgeous and I'm just so curious about how this came to be. Like this is literally a replica of King Tut's throne. Um, and then this is another gorgeous piece, so yeah. All right, and then these are the last two. So here I have this mug um, with <laughs> little jack-o'-lanterns on it, and then 
I have a whole bunch of bookmarks in here. So that just stays right there when I need a new one. And then right here we have my Harry Potter books looking very battered. These are some of like the best smelling books I own. I think I say that every time, but they really are. Um, and then right here we have a little Lego Hermione that I'm pretty sure I stole from my little brother like six years ago. Right here we have our cute little manga cubby as well as some graphic novels and comics and stuff like that. So these are all different manga series. Like we have Kitchen Princess, An Incurable Case for Love, um, Happy Marriage, Comey Can't Communicate, which I really want to read. I haven't read that one. Then we have Midnight Secretary. Of course we have Sailor Moon because um, yeah, Sailor Moon is my favorite. <laughs> and then I also have Sheets by Brenna Thumler, which is another graphic novel, as well as Persepolis. This is a Sailor Moon Eternal edition. Uh, I believe this is volume three. Yeah. And then we have a couple of Neil Gaiman's The Sandman, as well as finally The Arrival by Sean Tan, which I love. This is like a holy illustrated novel um there's no words and it was gorgeous so that is this little brown bookshelf these are the big bookshelves um all three of these are the same like the black ones and i found them at yisk they're pretty inexpensive they're definitely not the best bookshelves i've ever seen in my life but um like i'm still a student you know i'm not ready to upgrade my bookshelves to like academia professor level yeah anyway so let me just show you how like they're kind of arranged as an overview and then i guess we'll go like shelf by shelf so starting over here i have classic literature and it goes you know like lengthwise so we start classic literature classic literature i feel like i'm on um a wheel of fortune no what is it called is it a wheel of fortune you know the game where she like touches the touches the letters okay anyway so yeah, classic lit we have more classic literature. These are all arranged chronologically still. Um, and then this is another shelf of classic literature, kind of merging into modern classics. Here we have Phantom of the Opera. This is my Phantom of the Opera shelf. I'm very proud of it. And then this is more kind of classic and modern literature. When I get to the new place, I do have a new kind of bookshelf arrangement I want to try, but. I just want to get this last glimpse as well. Yeah, so then this one as well goes kind of classic modern lit all the way up until the year 2000. And then from there, I have it arranged according to country. This in the middle is a Roka shelf, just to kind of interrupt the flow. And then we still go country by country, kind of just around the globe, like from Africa, if that makes sense. I'll explain it later. Um, so that is this whole shelf. For example, we end with Italy over here. This one goes all the way until the UK. And then my fantasy begins here. So then fantasy goes all the way into like here. And then we have ancient historical fiction, um, historical fiction that isn't Greece and Rome. And then we go into like mystery, horror, thriller. And then finally down here, um, we start into dark academia right here. Then we go into sci-fi until here. Then we have a super short contemporary and romance section, and then we go right into middle grade all the way along here. And then young adult begins right there. This whole shelf is YA. And then Y ends right there, and we immediately go into um, religion, mythology, and regular nonfiction. And then the last two shelves, I have ancient uh, Greece, yep, <laughs> and then a little bit of ancient Egypt, and then this vase is kind of the separator between Greece and Rome, so that whole little bit at the bottom there is ancient Rome. Yeah, and then just to give you a little overview, like I do have my big chair here, I found this at a thrift store actually, and then I have a blanket, and then I do have three books there that I'm either currently reading or currently doing like a video thing with. So we have Anna Karenina, Oliver Twist, and Dante's Inferno, because I'm currently reading these two and then i'm planning a video with all of our twists so um there'll be like missing holes in the bookshelf where those are supposed to be but those guys are there and then here's just a little overview of my little print wall if i didn't already show you here they are they just all fit back there really really nicely like they are almost exactly wall to wall with those two walls which is really nice i didn't have to change anything so all right let's start with the first shelf 
All right, so here is an overview of the first shelf. Um, and like I said, <laughs> these are all classics um, and they are arranged in chronological order just because I like it that way. <laughs> and it also makes it easy to, uh, you know, know when something is written and how it relates to one another. And it's also like fun to see different trends and stuff like that. So um, let's just go through them. All right, so on that note, the first one we have here is Beowulf, which I have read. Um, so that is the first, the very first book on my shelves because I guess it is the oldest. And then we have The Quest of the Holy Grail, uh, which I have not yet read. So moving on, we have an Icelandic saga, The Prince by Machiavelli, The Big Chunky Fairy Queen by Edmund Spencer. And then all right here, we have a whole bunch of Shakespeare plays, most of them. I really do like these Folgers ones, so those are probably my favorite editions, but I have this really old copy of Romeo and Juliet, this really nice copy of Julius Caesar. And then I have Twelfth Night, A Midsummer Night's Dream, The Merchant of Venice, Macbeth, um, King Lear, which was also a uni read. And then this really cool, um, the art in Shakespeare edition of King Henry VIII, so that is also there. Then I have Paradise Lost, Three Restoration Comedies, Candide, A Vindication of the Rights of Women. This little flimsy one is The Castle of Otranto, which I loved. And then we have two Anne Radcliffe. I have The Mysteries of Adolfo and oh, I just bent that. <gasps> no. <laughs> and The Italian as well. Over here I have The Monk by Matthew Lewis, Northanger Abbey, Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, Emma, and then over here I have two copies of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley and then this one is Prometheus Unbound by Percy Bysshe Shelley, which I really love. Here we have a few collections of poetry as well as this really cute Franco pop I like to call him. Um, yeah, so he stays with Frankenstein. So then I have a book of Shelley's poetry, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, and then these two big ones we have Lord Byron and the works of John Keats. And then here is a little overview of the little shelf up here. All right, this shelf was a bit dark, so I just turned the light on. So right here we have um, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. This is designed by the wonderful Carolyn. Um, I will link her Etsy shop down below. She has a bunch of these author on the print type of work. So he sits there because Dickens starts over there. So the first one we have here, Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. Um, I think Oliver Twist should be right here. We have the classic tales of horror and some other short stories by Edgar Allan Poe. This is probably one of the first things that got me into classic literature, I think, was Poe. The Old Curiosity Shop, A Christmas Carol, and this edition as well has the chimes and the crickets on the heath, I believe. We have the complete poems of Emily Bronte. That's a typo. And then we have two editions of the really beautiful Penguin English Library, Wuthering Heights and Jane Eyre. We have Shirley by Charlotte Bronte, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave, and Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl by Harriet Jacobs. We have the very big David Copperfield, The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. We have Moby Dick by Herman Melville. This is a really gorgeous copy that I found at a thrift store. We have three Penguin Black Spine classics here. The Lady of the Camellias, The Turnip Princess, and Childhood Boyhood Youth by Tolstoy. On the side, we have Flowers of Evil, The Professor. Another three black classics we have the Wonderful Adventures of Mrs. Seacole in Many Lands by Mary Seacole, Ruth Hall by Fanny Fern, and Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. There's also Madame Bovary by Flaubert. I really love the like cover and the design that they choose for these Arcturus editions, but I don't love like the text on the inside. I really find it difficult to read. I think it looks really bland and I just really don't like the inside of these ones, but the covers that they choose for these are gorgeous. Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I cannot wait to read this one. The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. A very battered and falling apart copy of Great Expectations. It's, yeah, the cover I think has also just <laughs> come off of the book. We have a collection of Tolstoy's short stories, The Cossacks, Happy Ever After, and The Death of Ivan Ilyich. And then right here, just because we're talking about Tolstoy, we have another one of Carolyn's Prince. This time it's an older Tolstoy. We have the collected poems of Emily Dickinson, as well as Rimbaud's collected poems, Fathers and Sons by Turgenev. And finally, we have War and Peace 
yeah. <laughs> I just finished, uh, I just finished up reading this a couple months ago and it was incredible. All right, so this is a little overview of the third shelf of classics. So this spot right here is where Ona Karenina goes. I have Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky, as well as The Idiot. This one is Far From the Madden Crowd by Hardy. This is also one of uh, the earlier classics that I read. We have this big edition of The Brothers Karamazov, which uh, is like very high up on my TBR. I really, really want to get to this one. We have a couple Machado books. So we have The Alienist and Other Stories of 19th Century Brazil. This was incredible, really recommend. And then I really want to get into the posthumous memoirs of Brasco Bas because look at it. We have Against Nature by Huismo. This is the book that Dorian reads in uh, Picture of Dorian Gray. We have the Lady's Paradise by Mir Zola, King Solomon's Mines, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We have Touch Me Not, the great Philippine classic, which I really, really want to read. We have The Selected Letters of Oscar Wilde. And then also right here, this little baby is The Happy Prince and Other Tales as well by Oscar Wilde. The Cruiser Sonata and Other Stories. We have Yeats's Selected Poetry, a Picture of Dorian Gray. We have Mysteries by Newt Hampson, Lady Windermere's Fan by Oscar Wilde. This is a really great play. Jude the Obscure, again by Thomas Hardy. We have a couple big editions. We have The Island of Dr. Moreau, which I love, as well as Salome, which I also love. This one is Cyrano de Bergerac, and this is a really cool copy that one of you guys made me. Like, you found this in really beautiful. It's so gorgeous, so that is that one. We have Bram Stoker's Dracula, a really gross edition of one of my favorite books, which is The Turn of the Screw. I would love to get um, a better copy of this because this one is so weird. Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad and Lord Jim by Joseph Conrad. We have A Calendar of Wisdom, um, which is like Tolstoy's compendium of stuff to read all throughout the year. Golden Ball and Other Stories by Agatha Christie. In the Land of Time and Other Fantasy Tales by Laura Dunsen. De Profundis by Oscar Wilde. We have A Room with a View by Ian e. Forster, which I really want to get to this summer. We have a really old collection of T.S. Eliot's poems. Um, this one as well I've read in uni and stuff like that. We have Kafka's Diaries, which I haven't gotten to yet. I kind of want to start with something you know, like more substantial and like a work of his. And then a couple bigger editions as well. We have the Gitanjali and the Broken Wings. This one is so good. And then this one I really want to read, hopefully this summer too. Right here, we just have this random um, candle. It's like a Victorian bottle liquid candle, which I've never used. We have Early Poems by Edna St. Vincent Millay. I'd highly recommend probably starting with her, honestly, um, if you're looking for just anywhere to start getting into poetry. The Metamorphosis by James Joyce, a portrait, a portrait. What's going on? <laughs> we have a portrait of the artist as a young man. Finally, we have the selected poems of Ezra Pound. Coming over here, this is an overview of the next shelf of classics, um, all the way until probably the 19, late 1940s and 50s. Frost, The Road Not Taken, and other poems. I have a couple of compendiums of Lovecraft, so we have short stories and then a compendium. These are both Arcturus. We have Kristen Lavin's Daughter by Sigrid Inset. Jacob's Room by Virginia Woolf. Prophets by Gibran. This one is The Beautiful and Damned by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Um, I found this copy secondhand and like, I, I'm, I'm still not sure what that is. I don't know. We're just gonna ignore it. The Miscreants by Jean Cocteau. And then all right here, I'm not gonna take all of these out, but this is like a little Gibran collection. So we have a whole bunch of like memoirs, thoughts and meditations, spiritual sayings, um, and just different things that he's composed. So I'm so excited to read all these eventually. Here we have Inner Time by Ernest Hemingway, which I haven't read. The Great Gatsby is one that I really want to reread ASAP because yeah, I really want to get back into this. We have Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. Uh, we have some selected poems from Neruda. This one is The Sun Also Rises by Hemingway. I've actually never read Hemingway, so um, I don't know which one to start with though, let me know. Steppenwolf by Herman Hesse. We have Lady Chatterley's Lover, super bizarre cover. We have Decline and Fall by Evelyn Waugh. Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. This is one I really want to read soon as well. This is Bengal Nights. Um, this is a Romanian piece of literature and I really, really want to get into this. We have Murder on the Orient Express. Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald. We have the <laughs> iconic um, Ficciones by Borges and other stuff that he's written. Christopher Isherwood, Lions and Shadows. This really battered copy of Dylan Thomas's Miscellany. Calocane by Karen Boya. The Invention of Moral by Casares. The Tartar Step by Dino Buzzetti. Another Wa with Brideshead Revisited. We have Westwood by Stella Gibson. 
No, ah, oh, I always say Gibson. <laughs> it's Gibbons, it's Stella Gibbons, please. We have Snow Country by Kawabata, which I love. I did a whole video about this book if you wanna check it out, but this is another pretty good going classic that I would recommend. Um, if you wanna like just get into Kawabata as well, I think this is a great place to start. We have The Lottery and Other Stories by Shirley Jackson. Also really love this copy of The Cocktail Party. I found this secondhand as well. Um, I read this a couple years ago and yeah, it's crazy, but um, that is a play as well by T.S. Eliot. Confessions of a Mask by Yukio Mishima. Another Mishima with Thirst for Love. I also really love these um, vintage classic copies because then we have Bestiary by Cortazar. Finally, the last one here is Samuel Beckett's three novels, Molloy, Malone Dies, and The Unnameable. And then just sitting right here in the corner, I have a little cactus candle because he's so cute. What the heck? Um, hi, so I thought I would take you through my Phantom of the Opera Shelf because it's one of my favorite books. This collection kind of started as an accident. Um, it's probably lots of the best things do, but here we are. Um, Phantom of the Opera was actually the first, I think, adult classic I read, if you want to call it that. I um, saw this copy staring me at the face when I was in grade um, four at elementary school and I read it and I fell in love with it. Um, and it's just been such a wonderful part of my life ever since. So let me take you through all the different editions back here and then some other cool things as well as of course like this mug that drinking my coffee from this morning. So the first edition I have here is the vintage edition of Phantom and then it has two quotes from like from the Phantom on here, which I'm dying of love and I'm built up of that. Like I really, 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 really love this one. So then all of these are different editions. So we're gonna start over here. This one is actually the Phantom um, graphic novel. I got this for Christmas and I recently read it and loved it so, so much. I would just like eat up honestly anything <laughs> Phantom. So um, this was so nice to find that someone did a graphic novel and this is by, I believe, Tomi Varga. Right here, this isn't a uh, Phantom of the Opera, this is actually Phantom. <laughs> the Phantom by Susan Kay, which is like a retelling and it's also about uh, the Phantom of the Opera's life growing up. So this is a hardcover edition that I have. I will show you my paperback of this, it is so sad. It's like at the back, <laughs> like in a little fortress because it's so old. It's the most battered book that I own, so yeah. Um, yeah, here it is. This is one of my favorite books of all time and it's been it's been loved to the point of death, honestly. So I don't think I'm ever gonna read from this copy anymore. It smells like a lot of different things. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just randomly chanced upon this one day at a garage sale and it just like popped into my life. And um, yeah, I really, really love this. I love this book. So then I have some different copies of Phantom of the Opera. It has some different languages. Um, this one started my language <laughs> different editions off by accident because this one's in Korean. Even though I thought I ordered a French version, it, um, it wasn't. I got fooled. So um, now I have it in Korean as well. I was also gifted it in Spanish, which I really love. Like, look at this. Yes. So that is my Spanish edition. And really, really specially, um, this is my French edition. This was also made up by a subscriber who like, she did all of this binding and stuff and she put the title on it. And this actually comes all the way from Paris, which is perfect. And I, yeah, I've just always dreamed of having my French edition of Phantom like come from Paris. So <laughs> thank you so much for this. And then as for my English editions, this is the Barnes and Noble edition. Love it. This one is the Dalmatian Press edition. Yes. This one is the Penguin Black Classic edition. Love it. This is um the original like cover art from the from the novel. This is the beautiful Arcturus edition. This one is the Penguin Popular Classics edition. This is the edition that I have most recently read it out of. This is the Penguin, I believe, Red edition it's called. I don't think this is the anniversary one. I actually don't know what this is, but this is my annotated copy. Um, 
so yeah it's just yeah <laughs> it's just brimming with like annotations and stuff because i really want to write a paper on phantom eventually so i really love this copy this is the perennial library edition it's kind of got like the musical uh, cover. This one is the Bantam Classics edition. This was the first copy I ever read it out of from my school library. This is the Macmillan Collectors um, edition, which is so gorgeous. There's the back. Ah, oh, beautiful. Also on the shelf though, I do have this little um, butterfly display that I found at a thrift store, so they just kind of sit here. And then at the back, a really kind subscriber named Linda gifted me her playbill for Phantom, the 105th production at Broadway, which I love. So I just keep it um, at the back there. And then I do have my playbill somewhere. I actually need to locate it. And then right here, this is also a gift from one of you guys. It is a music box. So that's there. Back here, if you can see, this is artwork that one of you guys made. Thank you so much, Michael. I love this. So I just framed that and put it back there. And then this is just another book by Gaston Lafou, which is really big. It's The Mystery of the Yellow Room. So that's just Gaston Lafou's work. It's not Phantom. And that is the Phantom shelf. All right, so then this whole shelf just keeps going with like modern classics and stuff like that, still arranged chronologically. So we start with My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier, which was written 1951. I do like keep all of the, the dates inside just so when I want to rearrange it gets easier for me. We have more Kalabata with The Master of Go, The Crucible by Arthur Miller, Lolita by Nabokov, Pincher Martin by William Golding. This book is bonkers. Endgame and Act Without Words, again by Beckett. This is a recent addition to my shelves. This was a gift, but I don't know who it's from, so if this was you, hi. <laughs> um, but this is Palace Walk by Mafuz. We have On the Road by Jack Kerouac. We have Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak. We have a couple of the modern penguin uh, classics. So we have The Birds by Tarja Vesos and Things Fall Apart by Chino Achebe. We have The Haunting of Hill House and We Have Always Lived in the Castle. We have Hopscotch by Cortazar. I really want to read this soon, like I'm so excited for this one. We have Mishima, The Sailor Who Fell from Grace with the Sea. We have a really beautiful copy of The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. And then this is The Ice Palace by Vesos again. So beautiful. Such a stunning cover. We have The Greenhouse by Mario Vargas Rosa. This is from Peru. So excited to read this one. Then we have stuff like Stoner by John Williams. The Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys. The Beautiful Master and Margarita by Bulgakov. <gasps> 100 Years of Solitude. One, like, probably the best book I've ever read. A Small Town in Germany by Jeanne Curie. This is another recent edition. This is the first book in uh, the quartet, I believe, but it's called This Earth of Mankind. Finders Keepers by Seamus Heaney. Grendel by John Gardner. Watership Down by Richard Adams, The Infernal Desire Machines of Dr. Hoffman by Angela Carter, and we have a couple from Clarice Lispector, Hour of the Star and Agua Viva, If on a Winter's Night a Traveler by Italo Garvino. We have more Angela Carter with The Bloody Chamber. I love this edition. Next, we have Devil on the Cross by Ngugi Wationgu. We have, again, the beautiful uh, the House of the Spirits by Isabel Allende. And then we have two beautiful editions of the Book of Disquiet by Pessoa. The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, which I still have yet to read. Um, a stunning illustrated edition of Love in the Time of Cholera by uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. And finally, Saint and Tango by Laszlo Krasno Orke. Am I saying that right? And then right in the corner here, I have this little portrait of um, Garcia Marquez because He's wonderful and it has him with like his butterflies so this was a really lovely gift from Myra thank you so much so he stays over there with um love in the time of cholera and stuff all right so coming down to the third shelf here like we just went across all the way from there and now we are down here so this one is where the chronological classics ends actually and then we start on to books arranged by country kind of like literary fiction essentially arranged by that country's fiction so um yeah i think it's a little bit frustrating as well for me because in my new arrangement i think i want to like cut off classics at a certain point and then all of those modern classics i just showed you i do want to put them in with their respective countries because it's like yeah it's just not full do you know what i mean for example from like african countries i really only have one 
or countries like Japan or India and stuff like that. Like I have tons more that aren't together, um, which is fine, but I am, since I am doing my like reading around the world challenge, it makes it easier for me when they're all together. Anyway, let's go through this one. So the first one here is White Noise by Dawn DeLillo. Perfume by Patrick Suskind. Christoph's The Notebook, The Proof, and The Third Lie. Beloved by Toni Morrison. Nervous Conditions by Tsitsi de Garemga. A Small Place by Jamaica Kincaid. This was incredible. Sexing the Cherry by Jeanette Winterson. The Almanac of the Dead by Leslie Marmon Silko. The English Patient by Michael Ondaatje. The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. Arcadia by Tom Stoppard. This is like one of my favorite plays. Of Love and Other Demons by, again, Garcia Marquez. The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. And then right here we have Blindness, Fall on Your Knees, and Shipwrecks. This is by Kira Yoshimura, uh, Anne Marie McDonald, and Saramago. That is where that ends. Shipwrecks is actually our last like literary or classic or anything like that. And then we go into literary fiction, um, I want to say, kind of arranged by country. Um, and continent as well, of course. So we did start with Africa because I want to start kind of alphabetically and then just go around the globe starting from Africa. So the first one is The Hairdresser of Harare. This is by Tendai Huchu. This is another super recent addition to my shelves and this is from Zimbabwe. So that is the first one there. Like a lot of these you'll notice, I don't really have a lot for different countries, um, which I do want to get, but as well, like I do like kind of getting new books as I am reading them or like after I finish reading one, do you know what I mean? So that I don't have an overwhelming amount of options, which I kind of do at this point. But regardless, next up, we're going to go to Turkey uh, because we have Snow and Istanbul. We have Minor Detail, The Coincidence Makers, A Thousand Splendid Suns, The Hungry Tide, The God of Small Things, Oh, so good, incredible, highly recommend. And then, oh, I don't think I've been saying. Now we move into South Korea. Um, so we have Pavane for a Dead Princess. Also for South Korea, we have Untold Night and Day by Bae Swa, which is on my summer TBR as well. I think I'm gonna read this one in August. All right, so then we have one book from Japan, which is before the coffee gets cold. And then we move into my Murakami collection. So we start with Norwegian Wood, and then we have Dance, Dance, Dance. The Elephant Vanishes, The Wind-Up Bird Chronicle. These covers are just gorgeous. Like Murakami's designers are ingenious. And then we have Kafka on the Shore, After Dark, which is one of my favorites, 1Q84, and finally Killing Commendatore. And then on the other shelf, like the shelf ends right here, but I just want to show the colorless Sukuro Tazaki and his years of pilgrimage. And then right here in the middle, minus my phantom mug, this is my Rilke shelf. Um, if you're new to this channel, uh, Rainer Maria Rilke is my favorite writer in the whole history of the world. He's my favorite poet. He is literally my favorite everything. So these are a bit messy right now and we are missing, like I said, the book of images just because I've been doing some stuff. I've been reading a lot of Rilke recently, so these are just kind of organized a little bit haphazardly. So over here we have like letters, and then right here we have some collections of poetry. This is a collection of poetry as well, but... And then over here we have kind of some major works as well as some more short stories, longer poems, letters, and his one novel. To take you a bit closer, right here we have a French edition of Letters to a Musician. I have three copies of Letters to a Young Poet right here, um, which is one of my favorite works ever. Then we have Letters on God and Letters to a Young Woman. Just kidding. I also have a French edition of Letters to a Young Poet, which I would love to read in French as well. And then right here is a big, beautiful collection of Vilka's poetry. These are just candle holders that I have here. And then this is actually made by a subscriber. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Like, this is gorgeous. She embroidered this whole thing with a quote from Rilke that says, the only journey is the one within, which is just so gorgeous. So that is there as well. This skull with the butterflies you guys always ask me about, I also found thrifted. This vase right here, um, this Greek-inspired vase, I believe, is also thrifted. And then there's just some like fake flowers in there. So here I just have his collection of new poems, his selected poetry, and his uncollected poems. And then here's a card also from Rebecca, which I just stuck back there because it has his portrait on it, which is so gorgeous. And then here we have his novel, The Notebooks of Malta Lords Bricka. We have The Dark Interval, which is a selection of letters about grief, death, 
dying and mourning, which is incredible. I recommend this to anyone who's going through anything, which we all are. Then we have Stories of God, which is short stories. We have The Lay of the Love and The Death of Cornet Christopher Rilke, poetry. Then we have Book of Hours, so good, one of my favorite things ever. I do have another edition of this, but it's sitting over on my um, side table. And then we have Duino Elegies and the Sonnets to Orpheus, as well as two Prague stories, which are short stories. So that is my Rilke shelf and I just, yeah, I really love it. All right, so this shelf here is a continuation of the countries. I do want to say as well for like these literary genres, like they're pretty much just determined by like myself. Like I've just placed them here if I think, you know, they had some cool merit, if there's something I want to examine in them or if they honestly just didn't fit any other genre on my shelf. Most of these I would consider almost literary fiction or they have some kind of like literary value to me, whatever, <laughs> whatever I think that means. So um, yeah, they're just kind of here. This will almost finish up like the literary category fiction um, at the end of the country here. So like I said, we had The Last Murakami and then the last three from Japan here. We have The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa, uh, Convenience Store Woman, which was amazing. That's by Sayaka Murata. And then we have uh, Kitchen by Benena Yoshimoto. This is my one more modern uh, Russian literature, I guess, which is Maiden Hair by Shishkin, which I haven't read yet. From Bunny all the way up until Ragged Company, we have Canada. So this all here is Canada. All right, so yeah, this is a little bit messy, but we have Bunny by Mona Wad, and then these three books here are my Ann Carson's. So we have Autobiography of Red, Men in the Off Hours, and Decreation. Uh, Decreation is the only one I haven't read. Those two are brilliant. Then we have Broom by Emma Donahue, Small Game Hunting at the Local Coward Gun Club by Megan Gail Coles, The Break, and Ragged Company by Richard Wagamese. Also in here, we have two books by Anita Rabadami. We have The Hero's Walk and Can You Hear the Nightbird Call. Um, this was amazing and devastating. I highly recommend this one. And then for the United States or America or, you know, just American, um, born or raised, anything like that. We have Middlesex, Homegoing, Girl in Translation, In the Dream House, You Deserve Nothing, A Mercy by Toni Morrison, Bluettes by Maggie Nelson, A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Zeki, and The Human Stain by Philip Roth. We have Donna Tartt's The Goldfinch, which I'm actually currently in the middle of. I'm reading this at the moment and I have to say I'm not loving it that much. <laughs> And finally, we have A Little Life by Hanya Yanigahara. These three books are from Mexico. So we have Hurricane Season, The Iliac Crest, and The Murmur of Bees. Um, I'm so excited to read these ones. So, so, so excited. We have The Brief, Wonders Life of Oscar Wilde. From Chile, we have Daughter of Fortune by Isabel Allende again. We have Denmark and Poland, One of Us is Sleeping and Swimming in the Dark. For Italy, we have Tu Ferrante, My Brilliant Friend, which was incredible, highly recommend. And The Days of Abandonment, which I have not yet gotten to. And then we have this shelf right here, which ends with um, White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi. And then we start with Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell as we go into fantasy. We start with The Ocean at the End the Lane by Neil Gaiman. And then we have three Kazuo Ishiguro here. We have The Remains of the Day, The Unconsoled, and The Buried Giants. And then this right here is my David Mitchell collection. So we have Ghost Written, Number Nine Dream, Cloud Atlas, one of my favorite books of all time, The Bone Clocks, and finally Slate House. Uh, Mitchell's also one of my favorite authors. So yeah. And then we have White is for Witching. All right, so then right down here for fantasy, I honestly have not read a ton of these. Um, we have Jonathan Strange, we have The City of Brass. I've read the first Outlander, but not the second one. This though is one of my favorite series, is the Queen of the Tearling series. I dearly, dearly, dearly love this one. I don't have the third book, but this is one of my newest uh, favorite fantasy series by Erica. Johansson. And then there we have the two first books of the Eye of the World series by Robert Jordan, which I really, really want to read. And then we have Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. Um, two Sarah J. Mass books I actually have not read. Actually, three Sarah J. Mass books. I haven't read any of them. Um, I picked up Throne of Glass a few years ago at a thrift store, and then I found Queen of Shadows as well, which is like, I don't know, the fifth book or something, just because they were like super inexpensive. Um, but I have not yet even started that series at all, so maybe I'll do like a video on it or something once I get around to it. And then in the corner, I have A Court of Mist and Fury, which like I said, I haven't yet read. Um, this was the first book I think I bought when the pandemic hit, but I never read it. I have read the first one though. And then we have Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. Love, and I love The Night Circus too. This middle shelf is also fantasy, pretty much, so I'll start over here. 
This is a little dragon that one of my best friends um, knit me. Look at him. He's so cute. And then there's a little sign on him that says 100k. Um, because she made this when I hit 100k. So thank you so much, Sarah. I love this. I love this. He is adorable. Um, and he sits with my books that feature dragons because that felt fitting. And then over there we have a little Funko Pop bell. Uh, for no particular reason. So right here, of course, we have the Game of Thrones or Song of Ice and Fire. Um, I read all of them except for the last one, which I refuse to do. Kind of the same with Patrick Rothfuss's series. Um, I read The Name of the Wind a few years ago, thought it was okay, but once again, like with George R. R. Martin, I just don't really want to get into a series, like if I know I can't have the next one, you know? We have Blood of Elves, which I really, really want to read. I read this whole trilogy, it is The Shades of Magic by B.E. Schwab trilogy. Uh, yeah, honestly, just the biggest disappointment. I do only own the first one, which is good. I do not recommend continuing on with the series, if you're wondering. We have Half Sick of Shadows, which is a retelling of Arthurian legend, a beautiful copy of of the Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I read this a couple years ago as well and I really liked it, although I did have a couple big problems with it, but I think it's really pretty. <laughs> and then we have, of course, The Hobbit and The Fellowship of the Ring. And that's all I've read from Tolkien, actually. It's just those two books, so I definitely need to continue on. But right here in this little corner, we have historical fiction, but like ancient Greece, ancient Rome, and ancient Egypt historical fiction because I seem to have a lot of those books. So the first one is The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. Then we have uh, Alexander by Valeria. Massimo Manfredi. This is actually the third book though, so <laughs> I haven't read the first one yet. I accidentally thought this was the first book. Then we have a couple of Colleen McCullough, so we have The October Horse, as well as right here, The Song of Troy. Of course, I have The Song of Achilles. Really love this. And then we have The Egyptologist by Arthur Phillips, as well as this random murder mystery set in ancient Rome called The Venus Throw. All right, and then it also bridges the gap right here and we continue into more historical fiction so i have the amber road by harry sidebottom <laughs> this poor man why would his parents do that um and then we have the nightlife of the gods as well as pharaoh by wilbur smith and finally to close off that section we have Cassandra by Krista Wolf, which was brilliant, amazing, also highly recommend. So starting with The Tea House Fire by Ellis Avery, we go into historical fiction all the way until the book thief right here. So this whole section is historical fiction. We have some picks like The Queen of the Night by Alexander Chee. We have Henry James's Midnight Song, Mistress of the Art of Death, Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Breed. So excited for this one. We have Legacy by Susan Kay. The Paris Wife by Paula McLean, Tulip Fever, The Book of Longings, The Clockmaker's Daughter, The Shadow of the Wind, The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Society, Mr. Dickens and His Carol, The Joy Luck Club, Hercules Barefoot, of course, The Book Thief. Over here in this little corner, we also have another knit friend from Sarah. I love you so much. Thank you for this. Look at this little jellyfish. Isn't he cute? Um, right, so then here we just move into kind of some random horror, mystery, thriller, all of that jazz. So we have a retelling of Dracula, we have an Oscar Wilde <laughs> murder mystery series, and then these three books are all by Mark Z. Danieluski, who wrote House of Leaves, and then I also have The Fifty Year Sword and Only Revolutions right here. All right, and then that continues down into this shelf, so we're getting there. So we have stuff like The Monsters of Templeton, of course I have The Woman in Black, the Vampire. We have two Matthew Pearl here, the Dante Club and the Dante Chamber. We have Night Film, which I think I'm gonna get to this summer. Interview with the Vampire. And then these books right here are Dark Academia. I am deeming the section Dark Academia because we have Ninth House, which I hated. <laughs> the Furies, which I hated. Um, if We Were Villains, which was okay and The Secret History, which was okay. And then The Maidens, which I haven't yet read because it just came out, but I really want to. Um, but literally my whole Dark Academia um, little space here, I was not really a huge fan of any of them. But then that's okay because we move right into sci-fi. I love so many of these books. So from The Martian to Becky Chambers here, this is all science fiction. So these are a bunch of my picks. We have The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. Um, this was phenomenal. This is Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. And then right here we have my William Gibson little collection, but I really, really love William Gibson so much. I think he's my favorite sci-fi um, author. We have Solaris, we have Two by Susan Liu, so we have The Three-Body Problem, which was amazing. And we have He, She, and It, 
the Prestige, which was really, really good. And then we have two um, by this author. We have Artemis and The Martian. This is a really random section, which is like poetry. I want to say more modern poetry or released, you know, <laughs> earlier than at least Keats and, or later than Keats and stuff. And then we have a short story collection too. So we have The Sun and Her Flowers, which I want to do a video on, as well as more kind of modern poetry like this. Then we have My People. We have Alice Walker. And then we have a collection of stories about lockdown. Um, and COVID-19. I'm so excited for all the literature that is going to come out of this pandemic. That's all I can say. All right, and then this is an overview of my middle grade shelf. Anne of Green Gables should be right here, but my mom is currently reading. So I have two illustrated Harry Potter, the first and the fourth one, and then I have the Velveteen Rabbit. This is my super sad romance shelf. Um, some of these are like jokes from friends, like Hard as a Rock by Christina Warren, but I would really love to do like a strange video about books with shirtless men on the cover. I think that would be fun. We have a couple Phantom of the Opera, uh, like romance uh, retellings, and then we have Beach Read, which I just got the audiobook for, so I want to start that. We have Contemporary, and then we have Instructions for Dancing, which I also want to start soon as well. And then my middle grade is just arranged alphabetically as well, so we have Tuck Everlasting, um, this is one of my favorite books, The Girl Who Drank the Moon. We have Peter Pan, and then this series I really love. This is The Dark Hills Divide, or The Land of Elian by Patrick Carman. Really, really love these. We have a couple books by David Clement Davies, The Sight and Firebringer. Of course, we have Matilda, The Little Prince, Coraline, and then we have Tinder by Sally Gardner. Um, this was really fun. The Wind in the Willows, Green Glass House. Um, the Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman, <laughs> and then I have um, Harry Potter e la Pietra Filosofale because I was trying to read it in Italian um, when I was learning Italian, and then of course I have these two as well, and I've actually, like guys, I've never read this, it's so sad. And then finally just to finish up, I have a Lemony Snicket, his other series, as well as the Mysterious Benedict Society, um, the Amulet of Samarkand, and finally a long walk to water. Okay, and then finally here we have my beginning and pretty much the end, honestly, of young adults. So I'm going to go through this one super quickly. All right, so first we have this really beautiful um, Snow and Rose. Gorgeous. And then we have Howl's Moving Castle as well as the second book. So this is really the first YA book, which is Lock and Key. Then we have a couple others I haven't read. We have stuff like Legendborn, some uh, Heather Dixon, which is so good. This is like one of the worst books I've ever read. These are the delights, honestly. And in here we have The Blood Spell, which is one of my favorite YAs. And then we have some Maggie Stiefvater. I also really love Castle in the Clouds. We have some Dystopia. And then we have the Tehara Mafi um, Shatter Me, the first three books, as well as the Bone Season. And then finally, all the way down here, we have the last uh, few shelves now. So we continue with YA all the way until um, The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein, which I love so, so much. I also have another pumpkin candle here and then we go into some religion some philosophy and then I have a few mythology books up here as well but we have stuff like Nietzsche um, I have a few books by Nietzsche then I have a textbook about ethics we have some Freud and then we have some science books as well so for example I have a couple Stephen King this is one about constellations and then we have different um, science topic books as well as Darwin. Um, we have a book about the brain. We have a book about the sixth, the sixth extinction. <laughs> um, and then we have some mythology like Chinese. We have Japanese ghost stories. And then this is just general nonfiction begins. And I also have this little owl and he's also a candle. So um, yeah, so that's some nonfiction there. And then moving along into here, we also go right into nonfiction and then it ends right here. So I have some journals of Sylvia Plath. We have the Oaxaca Journal by Oliver Sacks, um, a book about the Incas, a book about Edgar Allan Poe's life. And then the last one here, it's vignettes of a pianist. So then we go into ancient Greece. These are kind of arranged a little bit, but mostly it was just so I could get the heavier books all on one side. 
um, and keep them on the bottom as well. So we have The Greek Way by Edith Hamilton. We have some Greek myths. We also have The Egyptian Book of the Dead shoved in here. We have The History of Herodotus, which I read a couple years ago, really loved. And of course, The Iliad, The Odyssey, Works and Days. And then this is just gorgeous. This is If Not Winter. This is Sappho, Fragments, translated by Anne Carson. And then we have a few other like textbooks, mostly from uni. Like these are all textbooks. Um, this is an ancient Egypt textbook. And then in here we have more Greek myth, some more ancient Egypt stuff like hieroglyphics, and then some more Greek textbooks. And then finally, to close off the ancient Greek section, coming over here, we have more Sappho, and then we get into Greek tragedy, like with the plays and stuff like that. We have an Oresteia, also translated by Anne Carson. Um, we have Aristophanes, we have Plato, we have Thucydides, um, and then we end with Polybius. And then I also found this vase thrifted. So, and then this is finally the last section of my bookshelf. It's ancient Rome. So we begin with Plautus, we have like Cicero, Sallust, Livy, um, Virgil, Ovid, Seneca, uh, and then we just keep going, you know, we have like Suetonius, and then we have, again, textbooks, nonfiction, and some coffee table books of like Roman painting, this is actually a textbook, and um, Great Treasures of Pompeii and Herculaneum, which is the last book on my shelf. All right, so we finally did it, we got through all of these shelves. Um, thank you so much for coming along with me. I hope you enjoyed. This is the last glimpse we're gonna get of these that I'm also gonna have of these. I'm gonna miss this little corner so much and I just hope at the new place like I can, you know, arrange it very nicely again and stuff. But thank you so much for watching. Um, yeah, <laughs> let me know what your favorite book you saw was maybe or something like that. But yes, we did it. We got through the whole bookshelf. So that was my little bookshelf tour. Thanks for coming along. I hope you had a good time. And I guess me and my books will see you very soon. So, ciao.